Hello and welcome to Pet I <laughs> Hello and welcome to Chad's Pagan Vlog, episode number 30. Today we're going to be talking about um, rituals, uh, the theory, and behind them, along with the, um, the steps to actually um, open and close the circle. Um, I'm your host, Chad83, and of course, as always, check out my website. Um, Temple of the Starry Sky, along with my online Book of Shadows at Wiccan.pw. So when you go to do, excuse me, uh, when you go to do a um, a ritual, a magic ritual, you will generally um, create a sacred space. This is the circle. Um, it's a little way of carving. A sacred space in the mon mundane world. Um, to do your work. Uh, the act of also just going around and actually doing the circle not only creates this the sacred space, but it also helps get your um, your mind in the right place. Um, some people, like myself, generally um, cast the circle like all the time for every almost everything. I generally don't do it um, if I'm doing like something basic like uh, candle magic, but I tend to cast the circle for most things. Uh, some people only cast the circle very rarely, if ever at all. Um, that's one of those work. Uh, over time, you'll figure out what works for you, and you can go from there. Um, the way I am going to be teaching is the way that, um, I've been taught when I was, uh, as a Wiccan, uh, how I've been taught to do it. There are certainly other ways to do it. Some call, uh, different elements. Some call it three. Four is a common number of Wiccan, but I have seen three. At least I've heard of three, at least. Um, I don't, I think I actually missed that ritual, but... Um, again, this is how I was taught to do it. Okay, so the first thing that you're generally going to do in a ritual, uh, if you are doing a ritual with other people, there's going to be an introduction. Um, pretty much this is where you are going to welcome them. Thank you for coming. Um, if there are any little, um, rules of the road that you as the person who's running the ritual is going to have this is where you're going to go over them then um, if there's any songs or chants that they need to be taught um, this is where you do it, hand out scripts for anyone who needs uh, who has a part, assigned parts if needed things like that um, you're also going to provide a introduction to the Sabbath or the Espet um, to those who are gathered. This is the part where you're going to take a moment and educate them as to what the meaning for this uh, this is. If you're doing uh, one of the holidays or the Sabbaths, or if you're doing uh, an Espet for the Moon, teach them a little bit about it. <coughs> this does not need, um, this can be your hist any history, lore, myths, things that are relevant. Um, However, this is where you're going to want to keep it short and simple. If you want to go into something long, keep those types of lectures for separate study groups. Okay. Um, at the beginning of the um, ritual, you are going to cast a circle, and then at the end of it, you are going to... Um, close the circle. Um, closing the circle is pretty much just casting it, but backwards. Um, generally, you call the elements, and the ancestors, the goddess, and the god. Um, and then, so if you do it in that order, when you close the circle, it would be the 
god, the goddess, the ancestors, the elements in reverse order. Or reverse to how you open it. Since um, in the Krellin tradition I was trained in, um, and in uh, the system I've built off of that, we start in the east. So it's east for air, south for fire, uh, west for water, and then uh, north for earth. So when you go to close, it'd be north for earth, west for water, south for fire, east for air. And if you would like, I do have guides already mostly written up and up posted on my website, wiccan.pw. If you would like a, a write-up for what we're going to be discussing, I go after this and I'll actually flesh out a little bit more. I'm looking at it as, a, as a, I have it open on my other monitor for notes and it definitely could use some, uh, some work. The first thing that you are going to want to do is ground all of the Eccentra energy. I've discussed grounding before, uh, but pretty much you're going to have everyone just take a moment into our basic meditative state, um, relax, and then just ground that energy. I, after this one, when I'm in a circle, I'll see I have some specific way that they want the energy grounded away. <coughs> I just do the tap root where you grow, visualize a, uh, like a root, a tap root growing out of your spine, down through the floor, down into the ground, and then extra energy from your body flowing to that, flowing down the root, and flowing into the earth. And then once you're done with that, you just retract that root back into your uh, in, into your aura. It's really part of your aura, so um, you do that. Uh, after after grounding is an opening bell. There's some point where you're going to just kind of indicate this is where we start. Some people will just ring a bell. For me, I usually say, all right, let's get going. Let's get started. Something. Let us begin. Something to that effect. And the next thing you're going to need to do is anything that needs to be virtually blessed for the ritual is going to be done at this point. <coughs> the only thing I tend to do bless is the water and salt. All my other tools are um, already consecrated, and since they're only used for that, I don't find it necessary to re-consecrate my tools. Um, and for me, they're just sort of consecrated by use. I don't necessarily have a specific ritual. Um, but again, this is an each their own kind of thing. Um, uh, how I uh, how I bless the water of the salt. There's a few ways to do it. Um, if you look on my website, I do have the by the book way that the Corellians teach. But generally, how I do it. Um, I'll hold the, the cup, because I do have small little ceramic cups for both of them, and my left hand, right hand over it, and I visualize flooding it with either a yellow, a white, or a blue light, until it, that light is glowing as bright as the sun. And this light is um, pushing or burning out any unwanted or negative energies from it. Um, I will generally declare it to be, you know, it is blessed, it is cleansed, so I'll make a declaration. Um, and then I'll, I'll do that with the water, then the salt, and then I'll put a pinch of the salt into the water, creating holy water. Um, you can also, in a, in a similar manner, also consecrate the, um, the fire, and the, um, because water, uh, salt represents air, water is obviously water. You can also consecrate your fire and your air signs, um, but I, I generally don't do that one. <coughs> um, <clears throat> once you, um, bless everything that needs blessing, 
um, you want to virtually cleanse the space. Um, this cleansing, it's not necessarily physically cleansing it, it should already be clean. Um, like that. This is going to be cleansing it of unwanted energies and spirits. Um, I generally just go around the perimeter of the circle um, sprinkling that holy water we've made um, and chanting, I cleanse the space, I cleanse the space, I cleanse the space. Um, broom. Uh, if you've seen some of my rituals, you know I have a little mini broom. I also sometimes use to sweep the area clean. I know my mentor, Lady Pam, she does the same there. Um, in bigger circles with like numerous people, big circles where you can actually get like 10, 20 people around it. I've seen people walk around with an actual broom. Um, yeah. so, so you do have options. Um, but the point here is simply to uh, cleanse the space of unwanted energies and um, spirits. As I said, I, I tend to use salt and water. Some will also go back around a second time with the fire in the air. Uh, air usually represented by incense, so that this uh, circle is cleansed with all four elements, since the water already has salt added to it. The water and the, the earth, uh, the water and the uh, earth elements. I don't generally do that. I usually use the salt and the water alone. That works for me. Um, and then once you've um, cleansed the area, uh, you will then um, actually cast the circle itself. Um, when it's just myself doing solo work, um, I just visualize a glowing circle around me uh, for this part. Um, in bigger groups, somebody may um, walk the outside with a ritual uh, knife or a sword. Um, it's not uncommon for them to also physically mark um, on the ground of the circle itself so people would know where that edge is. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, at this point, um, it is generally considered bad form to leave the um, the space, um, lest you um, disturb the energies that are there, that are raised and that will be there. And there'll usually be somebody who can uh, catch, who will open a door called Cutting the Circle, um, so you can enter and exit if, nece if necessary. But you should leave that if it's absolutely necessary. Avoid leaving the circle during a ritual. It's just bad form. Um, some groups would also have you um, cut yourself out. Um, if you do need to cut yourself out or cut somebody else out of the circle, would cut them back in. Um, how I do it, I, I approach the edge of the circle. I, I picture an actual wall of energy there, and I take a virtual knife, and I actually imagine cutting a rectangular door into it, and there it parts open, allowing them in, and then closes and heals itself up behind you. Um, the reason we generally don't want to um, do this is anytime somebody enters or leaves, um, you're going to take some energy with you. You're going to either bring some unwanted energies back into the circle, or take some of the generator energy out of the circle, and you're just sort of disrupting the whole thing. It's also a bit kind of kind of impolite or rude to the other participants that are there. It certainly can be distracting. Um, cutting, deliberately cutting a door into it is less disruptive than just walking out, but um, either way. <coughs> uh, once you've got the circle, basic circle cast, at this point we will then call each of the quarters. Um, Every tradition does it a little bit differently. How I've learned it is you start in the east for air, south for fire, um, west for water, um, 
north for Earth. Um, and how, how you'll do it is um, some will go, you'll physically turn, go to, if it's a big enough circle, you go to that spot. Some will, some groups will actually have a separate little altar for each element, plus the central one. Some don't. I generally don't. <coughs> some will, um, um, cleanse that individual quarter itself. Um, since I've done the whole circle, I don't find that particularly necessary, but each their own. Um, Uh, then you want to actually invoke the quarter. Um, if you think back to when we did the talk about the aids and the initiation, um, I believe I did actually uh, go into it a little bit here. When you go to call each quarter, there, there's going to be, uh, and when you close, it's going to be very similar to. There's going to be a couple things that you're going to do. You're going to address the spirit <coughs> by its name, uh, offer it praise, um, mention its qualities, you're going to request its presence, and then you're going to welcome it. Addressing the spirit by name, uh, guardian of the element of the air, watchtower of the north. Something like that. <clears throat> I gener a lot of times I'll refer to them as watchtowers, I find, lately. <coughs> um, and then you're going to um, praise this, offer praise to the spirit. You're gonna, um, you're gonna mention its qualities. Um, each element has certain qualities that are um, associated with it. Uh, this is, you're going to at least mention them. You're going to request it there. You're going to politely request their presence in your circle. Uh, this could be something simple as, you know, I ask you to join this ritual and share your powers with us. Um, and then you're going to welcome it. This is usually done with the statement, hail and welcome. You're going to, and you're going to repeat this at each separately at each quarter, each direction. Um, <clears throat> let, me, uh, let me pull up uh, my full moon rituals real quick, and I'll give you an idea of how one of those reads. An example here is one. I call upon the spirits of air who guard and protect the gateway to the eastern realm. I beckon and call you forth to the far corner of the universe wherein you dwell. Winds of chains, strength of tornadoes, bear witness to this right and give us your aid. Gentle breeze that carries the seed to fertile soil, descend into this temple and grant us your blessing. Realm of the dawning star, land of sunrise and of springtime, bestow upon us your gifts of inspiration and song. We seek to know ye, we seek to honor thee, by the air that is our breath we charge thee, we hear now. To the east and the spirits of the air we bid you hail and welcome. Okay, I did not write that one, I um, thought that was one I wrote, I think that's one my, uh, my first screen mentor, Lady Pam, wrote. I don't know where she got it from, but there you go. <clears throat> but that, that is everything we mentioned. I call upon the spirits of air, that part is um, addressing by name. Uh, then you get into that section, Winds of Chain, Strength of Tornadoes. Uh, it carries on into the Gentle Breeze, uh, Realm of the Dawning Star, that whole section. That is singing, it's, that is praising it, and um, mentioning its qualities. The next line after that, the We Seek to Know the line, that is actually inviting it into the circle. And then the last one, to the spirit, to the east and the spirits of air, we bid thee hail and welcome. You are now welcoming it into the circle. Um, and 
and said you're gonna go around to each of your <clears throat> quarters and repeat this process. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Once you have invited the quarters to stand guard at the uh, four directions of the circle and to lend their energy to the circle, you can then call the ancestors. Uh, I don't do ancestor work, so I don't generally call them. But if you are one to do it, this is generally where you would call them out. Uh, you would then invoke the goddess and the god in a manner that's appropriate. Um, when I when I say a manner that's appropriate, if you're doing a, I mean two things. One, some rituals are best ways to call the god and the goddess to your circle, um, which I'm not going to go into here as a little more advanced. But also you got to think of the form you're calling. If you're doing a, a, a rite of spring, you may call the young goddess and the young god, uh, the, the maiden and the young god. Whereas if you are at Yule, um, you may be calling them in their crone and um, sage forms. Um, In some traditions, after you call the goddess and the god, that's where you would call the ancestors. Um, it doesn't matter to me. I don't do ancestor work either way, but uh, figure out what your uh, your tradition or your or even your group uh, how they prefer to do it. Um, once you at this point, once you've uh, called the goddess and the god, you now have a fully formed circle, and it's time to begin the work. Um, at this point, you, um, if you haven't done so before, explain the focus and the intent of the ritual. So people know why. Why are we here? What are we doing? Um, at this, and then you will go into, this needs to be just a brief little thing of, you know, we're here to, uh, so you might be there to celebrate a, a holiday, you might be there to raise energy to help somebody's healing, there, there's a lot of reasons. Um. As I said, if you haven't mentioned it before that you began the circle, uh, mention it here. Um, I would not do the whole little give them a lesson on what this means at this point, but that's just me. Uh, then there's the actual act of power. This is the actual magical working. Um, it's going to take... I can't really say what how it's going to be because everyone's different you know a, a, a right for a sabbath or a, an espet or are you doing a rite of passage are you doing healing are, are you just it's always a little different um but in general you are going to raise energy um and there's a lot of ways to do it visualization um we did discuss that one um, meditation, uh, not so much meditation, visualization, singing, chanting, dancing, um, all those are ways to raise energy. In an earlier episode, I told people that you should be able to visualize forming a sphere, but, uh, and it was, a, it was an exercise I gave, you know, you should be able to visualize a sphere of light between your hands, you should be able to uh, take time to adjust its color, adjust its um, shape. Um, this is all acts of raising energy. Um, and I, I do hope people actually have uh, been doing these exercises. Um, I'd say you're doing a, a healing spell for somebody. I, I do remember having one done on me a few months ago because I was a car accident at work. Not my fault, but, you know, my back was kind of jacked up afterwards. Um, and um, I jumped in a group with some pagan friends... Uh, who just chat every uh, Monday on Zoom, and they, they did a little impromptu healing ritual for me. And it was visualizing a ball of light. I can't remember if it was white or blue, but again, this is where these exercises do come in together. 
you visualize this ball of white or blue energy, a ball of a shape, and then you send it to the person who needs the healing. You also, um, they also prayed at the same time that I would be able to, you be open to receiving that energy and receiving the healing from it. Um, whereas, let's say, if I'm doing something for the Corellian Crystal Web, um, again, you also do raise energy for that ritual too, but it is in specific shaped objects. Um, yeah. <clears throat> um, but, okay, so... Um, if, you, if you'd like to see some examples of what rituals do look like, um, put all together. Uh, I do have a collection on my Wiccan.pw site. Look under Sabbaths and Espits, which will be uh, Espits. I specifically have um, the moon rituals there. That's just my... Some people use Espit to define any ritual that's not a Sabbath. I specifically use it to define lunar. Um, Sabbaths of the lunar cycles. Um, Espits of the lunar cycle. And I just sort of just refer to everything else as rituals. Um... Whereas the Sabbaths are more, uh, at least in my book, uh, based on the solar uh, cycles and the, their matching and their associated cross quarters, which are what happens halfway between um, the lunar events, uh, the, the, the Sabbaths and not the Sabbaths, and the solstices and the equinoxes. Uh, once you um, have completed the act of power, the actual working itself. Um, a lot of, a lot, not all will do the cakes and ale. Um, this is going to be, um, for, there's a couple reasons for doing this. Um, one, eating and drinking does tend to be a grounding, um, uh, event. <clears throat> consuming food, consuming drink does help to draw down that extra energy you raised and help dissipate it. Um, and because if you don't, you do walk away feeling off. Because you've got all that extra energy built up, it's still inside of you, just sort of floating around without a purpose. <clears throat> um, but there's also the blessing that goes with the cake scenario. Um, cleansing it is um, how I do. It's generally similar to how I do the uh, the water and the um, salt. Hand over it, visualizing a light glowing within it, pushing out the uh, extra uh, the uh, unwanted energies and spirits from it. And, but then as you present it to somebody, you say, may you never thirst, and may you never hunger. Uh, depending on if you're giving them the drink or the, uh, the, the, the food item. Um, and this itself is a blessing, and, and um, where you are praying that they may never hunger and they may never thirst. May they always have what they, they uh, need. This is what you do. So it's kind of a, a twofer there. Um, not everyone does the cakes and ale. It, it also, even though it's called cakes and ale, it does not have to be either. Um, I generally use flatbread for mine. Some people will use actual cakes. Some use, uh, like, leavened breads. Uh, I use a f really crispy flatbread I, that I pick up at Publix. Um, it's almost like a cracker. Um, ale, um actual ale it could be any kind i use generally um red wine is very popular i like little um pre-mixed cocktails for mine and when i want alcohol um i've used energy drinks i've used sodas i have a friend who i don't think i've ever seen him have it, use anything other than dr pepper in his for his cakes and ale uh, some use water some people just don't do cakes and ale at all um I remember one of the very first rituals I ever went to, so back in... One of the first rituals I went to with other people. <laughs> um, back in 2002, I think one person was... Uh, for the, instead of cakes, it was M&M's, if I recall. But yeah, I think she had M&M's and I think just a can of soda, yeah. Um... Uh, this is also the point where you may make an actual offering to the god, goddess, and the ancestors. This offering would be, you know, a little bit of food, a little bit of drink. Uh, once you are done with this, generally you will begin taking down your circle, closing the circle. 
Uh, and this, as I said, is going to be opposite of how you opened it. So, if you called your ancestors after the god and goddess, you'll you'll dismiss them first, then the gods, and goddess. Now, if you do the goddess, then the god, you would uh, dismiss it, the god, then the goddess. If you did the god first, well, the god would be last. It's a first in, first out. No, first in, last out kind of thing. Sorry. Um, and then you would, um, after the god, the god and goddess, you would... Um, Ancestors, if you called them before the gods, they, you'd, um, you'd dismiss them after, and then you do quarters in reverse order. Now, what you're actually going to say during this uh, is going to be very similar to what you said at the beginning, except instead of saying, you know, let me pull that one up. Uh, okay. Um, it's going to be very similar, but... Usually there's a point where you invite them in and then you say hail and welcome. It'll be, you know, you know, we ask, um, you'll ask them to leave and then hail and farewell. Um, when I'm calling them, it's usually the same, you know, I'll um, charge, you know, charge the be here now, hail and welcome. Um, and I do that for both the elements and the, um, the god and goddess. When I am dispelling them, I do it slightly differently. The god and goddess, you know, I will ask them politely to leave if they wish. Um, hail and farewell. The elements, um, when, you, when you're dispelling the crop, the, um, elements, what you will do in a reverse order. So if you did, um... How I, how I was mentioning with there, it's um, air, fire, water, earth, you do it reverse. So it'd be water, I'm sorry, it'd be um, air, water, fire, or air. No. It's opposite. You, you, you go backwards. So, yeah. Um, one, one thing that some people do, though, and, is when you are dismissing, especially with the elements, You'll just, a lot of people use the phrase um, uh, when they're uh, asking them to leave. They use the phrase um, "Go if you must, stay if you will," which is giving the element a choice. You can leave, or you can just stay here after the circle. Um, for a lot of people, that's they say that's the way you must do it. Um, I, I had a teacher who I quite respect. Um, explain to me why that's actually not necessarily the best way to do it. Um, especially if you have a, um, a fixed sacred space, like you have a room or an altar, you generally are going to want to control what energies l linger there at all times. So giving them the option, eh, maybe you go, maybe you stay, whatever, uh, may not be what you want. So what I go with is I just say goodbye. I use the phrase, go in peace and go in power. Um, and I like to say thank you to my friend Edward for pointing me that direction. Um, it's a politer way of saying, you know, you don't have to go home, but you don't have, you can't stay here, I guess. Um, but um, to give, give you an idea of when you are dismissing um, an, an element, since the, the, the gods and the elements are going to be, as I said, it's the opposite of how you um, open the circle. Um, I read you how I would call air, so let me go ahead and give, show you how I would um, dismiss air. Guardians of the Watchtowers of the East, Spirits of Air, we give thanks to you and for your presence at this rite. We ask now that the winds of change subside into gentle breezes as they recede back into the far corner of the universe from whence they came. Ere you depart for your lovely realms, go in peace and go in power. Until we have need to call upon you again to the east and the spirits of air, we bid thee hail and farewell. And now you'll see that that is similar but opposite of what we did at the beginning. We still address my name. We still um, we thank them for what they did. 
we still mention their qualities, but instead of um, calling those qualities to us, we thank and ask that those qualities now leave our, our working space. You know, I, I, you know, I then use the phrase, go in peace, go power, showing that this is them leaving um, until we call, you know, until we need them again. And then we bid them goodbye, hail and farewell. Um, with, with a lot, some of them will, um, at this point, this will ring a bell and the circle will be open. Uh, I'll usually also, um, some will also end, have like some characteristic phrase that they usually end with. Um, I go with um, the term as above, so below, as within, so without, as the universe of the soul. The circle is now open. Merry meet, merry part, and merry meet again, and may you blessed be. Um, the first part, as above, so below, that is from Hermes Transmagestus and the, uh, the Emerald Tablet, I believe it is. The circle is open. I am now declaring this circle is now open. Everything we've done at this point is now done. Undone. And then the next part, Mary meet, Mary part, Mary beat again, and bless be. You are just simply blessing the people until the next time you see them. this point or maybe a, um, a bell also will be wrong uh, or something like that J just again to signify where the um, that this this is the end of the ritual some groups will then do another grounding at this point again just to help get rid of any extra energies uh, this is generally going to be done after the circle is uh, closed um, and then there may be some within the framework of the ritual itself some final words um, generally not going to happen if you're doing the solo. This is, again, a group working thing. Um, and then after this, if you are working with groups, it comes what I refer to as the sacred, uh, the sacred bullshit. And this is just that part uh, that lasts anywhere from five minutes to ten times as long as the ritual itself. Where everyone just sort of, you know, chit-chats. Um, and I have seen rituals. <laughs> I've done some recently where the ritual's... 20, 30 minutes long, the after after ritual chit chats five hours. Not kidding. Um, witches are chatty if nothing. Um, but af after the ritual, maybe um, social time. I've been to some, especially bigger groups, especially for holidays, where there will be potluck or a meal or something like that. This all usually happens afterwards. You don't, you don't do a lot of the eating beforehand because as I said, eating is a grounding energy, is a grounding act where you're dissipating energy, and the last thing you want to do is that before you raise your energy and have your stomachs in there, eating up some of that energy as you digest. But that is the basics of a ritual. If you would like to learn more, um, um, go online to my website, wiccan.pw. Um, the articles you're specifically going to want to read are going to be um, from Chapter 4, you know, uh, Ritual Theory, Casting Circle, Closing a Circle. Um, in Chapter... That's Chapter 4. In Chapter 3, you might want to go back into the aids and the elements, especially when you're figuring out what qualities um, you are calling for the elements and, and then their associations. Uh, and then back in chapter four, there's a section on Sabbaths and Espits. I do have sample rituals for uh, those listed there also. And in the next few days, I'll go ahead and revisit those articles and uh, make sure they're up to snuff and add anything I can uh, think of that might be appropriate. So, um, thank you for letting me give you a little glimpse into how I, at least how I do rituals and cast the magic circle and all that good stuff. I hope you've uh, taken away something from this. Um, as I said, check out my uh, website, wicked.pw, if you'd like to help out uh, with what I do. I you can always use donations. Um, when you're on the site, there is a link at the top that does a donation. All donations, at least in the United States, are going to be tax exempt as we are a nonprofit um, church established here in um, 
the state of Florida. Um, if you would like to send me any emails or whatnot, uh, vlog at wiccan.pw should be working now. Take me, I know when we started making these videos, I was having issues getting that email working, but that should be straightened out now. Um, you can check me out on Facebook or on YouTube. Just search for the Temple of the Starry Sky. There's links on the website also. Um, thank you. Take care. May you stay safe. May you uh, stay warm if it's cold where you are. Uh, I know it's still quite chilly because we're like, what, three days after Christmas now. It's cold here in Florida. Um, and until next time, may you blessed be.